are, are quite pop quite popular, right? Um, but there will, there will be sites where the animations are not smooth. Sometimes when you get in a room with a lot of front-end developers, you'll hear the number 60 FPS being thrown around. 60 FPS, 60 FPS. What that actually is, is 60 frame rates per second. And that, I think that's the refresh rate for um, the monitors that we use. So when your animation happens at 60 frame rates per second, it looks really smooth. Now, if your animations are anything less than 60 frame rates per second, what happens is that there's a disjoint in the way the animation renders and how your screen refreshes. So it'll be like, that, that's where the word gen comes in. It's where your animations are choppy. Back to Sebastian. Somehow I think he is, he, he's physically allergic to jank. So he, he will make sure that, you know, your, your code and your animation is as performant as possible. And of course, nobody likes, a, nobody likes to see things janky. I think as, as human beings, right, we like to see our animation smooth. So now, the problem with browsers is that when the internet started, right, in the, in browsers were just a way for people to share information. It, it's like HTML is hypertext. So the, when people started out, they, they didn't think that the browser was going to do any of these fancy animation stuff, right? All it's going to do is to so probably click a link and you link to another link and you link to a lot of information, just links everywhere. But somehow, you know, people being creative and all, they're going to start doing things like animation, especially in recent, recent years, animation has become a very big thing. So, but I feel that a lot of developers don't actually know how browsers render things. In fact, just now when we mentioned browser support, right, we, we, I'm, we, we talk about a lot of browsers. We say, say Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. All these are different browsers, and each of these browsers have their own rendering engines. I mean, that's, that's, probably, that's because they're all pro proprietary. I mean, Google has their own engineers, their own rendering engine. Microsoft has their own rendering engine. Mozilla has their own rendering engine. So all these engines, what they do is, as it says, render. So what they do is they display stuff on your screen. Now, how br browsers usually, there, there are three main ways of how browsers render stuff on your screen. So um, it actually starts with layout, paint, and then composite. So actually, if you look at your Chrome Dev Tools in frame mode, you can see a timeline view. I, I, I'm not sure how to trigger it right now, but you will see a timeline view um, and it, it will start with recalculate style, then layout, paint setup, paint and composite layer. So if you actually go into it, uh, what Chrome DevTools does is it allows you to see a timeline of how your browser renders each element on your screen. So as I mentioned just now, three main things. It's layout, paint and composite, right? So what layout does is that the browser needs to figure out where everything should be on the page. So like layout. So it's like, oh, the header is on top. There's going to be a sidebar. It's, at the f it's on the right side. The main content is... So you have to figure out, you have to sort of plot where everything is. So after it's, it, it has plotted where everything goes, then there's the paint. So where it will actually... So imagine like... You just try to imagine like wireframes. There's like three rectangles. And then it's, it's going to paint. So it's going to like... You're now you're, you see, oh, okay, the header is like green and orange, yellow. So it, it paints the stuff. And the last part is composite. Um, let me think. How to talk? Composite is more of like, uh, it will draw the layers out onto the screen. So think of it as, it's like a pyramid, right? So on the base, you have layout. One level up, it's paint. And on the very topmost level, composite. So imagine if you change something in the base layer. You, probably, you, you have to rebuild the entire pyramid. That's why layouts are the most expensive of... Uh, if you're going to affect the page layout, that's, that's going to be the most expensive. Next is paint, and last is composite. So different CSS properties trigger this uh, different... The, the, uh, how the browser re-renders things. So those of you who actually have your phones or browsers, you can go to cssstriggers.com because this website, it tells you a whole list of all the CSS properties and how the browser renders them. So the first one, as I mentioned, is layout. So what it does is the browser will generate the geometry and position of each element and it's very expensive because when you make a change to any of the properties that trigger a layout, the engine must reflow. So for if you... 
if you just change one thing, right, the browser is not smart enough to realize that, oh, only that one thing changed. It will calculate through everything, the entire page, all of your DOM elements to like, oh, OK, header is here, uh, sidebar is here, content is here, footer is here. Even though you only change a little bit of the sidebar, it will say, oh, header is here, sidebar is here, content is here, footer is here. So that's why it's very expensive. So now, a few properties that will trigger layout is like width, height, border, uh, position. So when you actually try to animate these properties, like you, you, if you want to animate something from left to right, and you animate the position from left to right, this is a very expensive animation, and it's a very high chance your animation is going to be janky. So the next one is, is pain. So things like um, your color, your background image, background position, these actually trigger a repaint. So you'll be surprised to know that, what, and, and I myself do it very often, like when we hover on our buttons, we like, maybe we change the color, that actually triggers a repaint. In the, in the grand scheme of things, it is probably not the most expensive thing you can do in terms of performance, but do keep in mind that it does trigger a repaint. And um, the thing is, when, browsers, when browser vendors were, 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 were creating browsers, they didn't think so much in terms of like, how to optimize repaints properly. By rights, if you change the color, it shouldn't trigger a repaint. So actually, right now, what browser vendors are doing, they're actually trying to make, they're, they're trying to make it more efficient. But I mean, it's, it's a work in progress for now. So the, the only CSS properties that you can safely animate like minimize jank are those that affect the composite layer. So only two properties have this, is CSS transforms and opacity. Opacity actually does not cause a repaint, because what it does is it's handled by the GPU, and it will paint the texture at a lower alpha value. So it actually doesn't trigger an actual repaint. So when if you do want to animate something, you want to uh, animate something like uh, growing, shrinking, going left, going right, go up, down, rotate. You can actually do all of this with, with a combination of CSS transforms and opacity. I think it's quite safe to say that you, you cover almost, every, almost everything that you can possibly think of animating on your, on your site. You can do safely with these two properties. So that's just that's my five minute lightning talk. Uh, if you ever want to do animations using CSS, try to, keep this, try to keep this in mind and try to only animate your using CSS transforms and opacity. Yeah, that's it for me. We are technically done, which means it's announcements time.